What's happening? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And yes, I have the MagSafe battery pack in hand right here and you know I'm going to give it a run through for a few days before I put out my review because um, I'm not going to do a review after just having it for a day and it might not be for everyone but you know it's already changed how I feel about it in a few ways so it's coming to the channel soon. Be on the lookout for it but if you thought that there wasn't much happening around the Apple rumor mill things just started heating up because 9 to 5 Mac dropped an exclusive report that Apple is currently testing a brand new external display with a dedicated A13 chip inside and a neural engine. So for pros freaking out a little, if you just bought one, you might shed a tear. But according to the report, the new display has the code name J327. The technical specs are unclear, but what is clear is that this new display will have an Apple processor inside, which is currently the A13 Bionic chip that's used in the iPhone 11. Now this new external display will also feature the neural engine to aid in machine learning tasks and that's something we haven't seen before. There were earlier rumors that Apple has been working on a more affordable display geared towards consumers and that may still be the case but this new display is likely going to be the next generation Apple Pro display. Now we don't know exactly when the display will come out but it doesn't sound like anytime soon just in case you might have bought one like Justin in Canada. I'm sorry. But as a pro user, I can only imagine what they can do with Apple Silicon in a display, talking to Apple Silicon in a Mac and just kind of the communication between the two that goes beyond just sending a video signal to it. It could potentially act as a smart display with the Apple TV user experience if it has an A13 chip inside it, or it could maybe even connect to HomePods. Ooh, that, that's kind of cool. I mean, my brain is just throwing this stuff out there, but anything is possible if it has Apple Silicon inside it. Now Samsung released their own smart monitors and I just love this idea of it being a multi-function device that could stand alone for computing, gaming, or streaming content. Also, this new Apple display will probably cost a pretty penny. Hey, that's actually a pretty penny. But it's gonna cost a lot of money like the original XDR that started at $5,000 if its base model is 32 inches. So if you want it, I say start eating that instant ramen to save up now. There's also been a lot of back and forth around the new iPad mini 6 that's expected later this year with a new design that pulls from the current iPad Air with no home button, you got slimmer bezels. Well, 9to5 Mac reports that it will be powered by Apple's newest A15 processor. It will feature USB-C instead of lightning to align with the rest of the modern iPads and then it will also include a magnetic smart connector. It's expected to use the same A15 chips that will be in the new iPhone lineup in 2021, while Apple is still working on a more powerful A15X that could be used in other iPads down the line. Now, this report does have no mention at all of an M1, M1X, or even an M2 as a possibility. USB-C will also bring compatibility with different accessories, but will it get the same functionality as an iPad Pro on a mini? I mean, that's really up to Apple. They also report Apple is expected to release a new entry-level version of the iPad by bringing a A13 chip inside it compared to the current 10.2-inch iPad that has an A12 Bionic. There's been some back and forth about whether or not it will bring a mini LED display after Digitime said it's coming. Well, display analyst Ross Young, who's been on the money with many of his display reports, says it will not have mini LED when he talked to the factory providing the new mini display. So after Apple claimed this year that the mini LED display was a deliberate decision by Apple to only make it available in the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Plus then you have all the multiple reports that there's bottlenecks in the supply chain. It might be wishful thinking, but it just does not make sense to see the new display tech on an iPad mini, but not on the 11 inch iPad Pro this year. Maybe they trick us, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Now reportedly, Apple product release dates, they're shifting all over the place we've heard earlier reports that the highly anticipated new MacBook Pros would arrive in September and then it changed to October and then Bloomberg recently reported that they will drop any time between September and November which means sometime by the end of the year somewhere in there just like I say throw a dart at the calendar and you might get it right you could be just as right as they are. But the latest report from Ming-Chi Kuo claims the new redesigned MacBook Air with a mini LED display that's expected to be the first Mac with an M2 chip and colors will be officially introduced sometime in mid-2022. Early reports haven't been able to peg down a date, only saying maybe sometime in that year, but now Kuo is targeting the middle of next year. So we are getting closer to an uncertain date. And I know that's nice and all, but 2021, come on, for me, this is the year of the Mac the MacBook Pro specifically, and all I really care about is that 16-inch laptop. In iPhone news, 
Corning, who is the supplier for a majority of the glass components in the iPhone, has announced a new scratch resistant glass composite. It's called Corning Gorilla Glass DX and DX Plus, and it's a glass for camera lenses that can now capture 98% of light with little reflections. It's also more scratch resistant, approaching the resistance levels of Sapphire. DX and DX Plus glass have been used on smart watches, and one benefit for Apple could be if the costs are actually lower compared to using Sapphire for the camera lens while having roughly the same durability. Now, Corning already provides the glass for iPhone displays as pretty much as long as we can remember. And they've also worked closely with Apple to create the ceramic shield display on the iPhone 12 lineup. We also have a new report that says the new iPhone 13 may support faster charging speeds with a 25 watt power adapter. The current iPhone 12 lineup supports 20 watt charging at the most. And although it wouldn't make a huge difference, your phone will still charge faster. Now Samsung's S21 lineup already supports 25 watt charging and the report claims Apple will release its own 25 watt power adapter as an accessory purchase. Now the iPhone 13 models will reportedly come with an increased battery capacity as well. So this might make more of an impact with pro models, which are expected to be using the more advanced 120 Hertz refresh rate display with rumors that always on is also coming to them as well. But we know that the iPhone is coming sometime in September if things get back on track this year, which we expect to, but what could come alongside of them? Digitime says, based on their reports in the supply chain, AirPods 3 should arrive alongside the iPhone launch this fall. The AirPods 3 are expected to bring a new design modeled after the AirPods Pro, so that means shorter stems and then support for spatial audio for movies, TV shows, and then Apple Music with Dolby Atmos, and they'll be priced somewhere around $150. AirPods Pro 2 have been reportedly targeted for 2022. We've talked about that in previous videos, so we're gonna have to wait and see. Now we haven't heard much about this product after the release. I don't, it's not that the hype is dying, but you know, they're there, but Apple's released some new colors for AirTag accessories. If you wanna add some brighter flavor to them. Now, some of the new colors are currently available on Amazon before they've been made available on the Apple store, including Capri Blue, Pink Citrus, and Sunflower. That might change by the time you see this, but who doesn't wanna spend another $29? Well, I know Brian in California just said, I don't. And listening to Apple Music Spatial Audio Tracks with Dolby Atmos with your built-in speakers mm, isn't gonna be the best experience, but if you really want to, Apple has updated its support document for official device support and removes some earlier devices from that list. It now says devices with built-in speakers that support spatial audio in Apple Music include the iPhone XS and later, except for the iPhone SE, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch third generation or later, the iPad Pro 11 inch and the iPad Air fourth generation. Now that's a pretty short list, but if you really wanna get the best experience, you gotta go over the air headphones that support it. And they're obviously gonna be your best bet. Even AirPods Pro will be better than your built-in speakers. I mean, that is kind of obvious. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for now. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell. Ding! to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week, plus special guests. But thanks so much for watching and supporting everybody. I'll see you next time. Take care and be safe. Peace.